Welcome to our lecture online and now let's take a look at the planet orbital periods. Now we have eight planets, we'll also take a look at uh, Pluto, but uh, notice that for the inner planets, since they're so close to the Sun, it doesn't take them all that long to travel to make one trip around the Sun. For Mercury it's only 88 days, Venus is 225 days, and for the Earth it's just slightly over 365 days, 365 and a quarter days. That's why we need that leap year every four years. Mars, almost double, 687 days or 1.88 years. But for all these terrestrial planets, that's a relatively short period of time. Notice that we first learned about the relationship between the orbital period and the average distance of the planets through Kepler. This is Kepler's third law. And Kepler realized that the period, the orbital period squared, if we place that in years, was always going to be equal to the average distance between the Sun and the planet cubed. For the Earth, that's easy. If we put this in astronomical units, that is 1, so 1 cubed equals 1 squared. But did it also work for Jupiter? Well, we were able to observe Jupiter, and over the years we could then tell that one trip around the Sun for Jupiter was 11.86 years, almost 12 years. So if we place 11.86 uh, here, 11.86 quantity squared, we knew that that was going to be equal to a cubed. So therefore, the average distance between the Sun and Jupiter would be a is equal to the cube root of 11.86 quantity squared. So let's try that. That would be the answer in astronomical units. So we get 11.86. We square that number. And then we take the cube root of that number. So we raise that to the... Um, Oh, let me try it again. That was wrong. So 11.86, we square that, equals, and now we take that and raise it to the one-third power, let's take the cube root, and that comes out to be 5.2. So there we say that A is equal to 5.2, and of course that would be in astronomical units, which is about the right answer for the uh, average distance between the Sun and Jupiter. So Kepler realized this relationship based upon all the information that he received from Taco Brahe when he died, and since Kepler was working for him, he was able to use that information and find a way to, to calculate the distance of this, to the planets just by knowing how long it took them to go around the Sun. When we look at Saturn, notice Saturn has an orbital period of almost 30 years, and so the average distance, if we plug in uh, 29.37, we square that, we take the cube root, we get the average distance of Saturn and so forth. Of course, at the time, Uranus and Neptune were not yet known, and especially not Pluto. That would think came later when they had better telescopes. But notice, Uranus is so far away that it takes 84 years for Uranus to make one trip around the Sun, and for Neptune it takes 165 years. And just for comparison, for Pluto, it takes 248 years to make one trip around the Sun. At those enormous distances, it takes a very long time for a planet to travel around the Sun. But that gives you a feel for how far remote they are and how slowly they move around the Sun in orbit. Just think, in a single lifetime, Neptune will not travel around the Sun even once. And so that's another look at our solar system and another way of understanding the relationship between the Sun, the planets, and everything else, in this case, the orbital period. And that's how we do that.